You guys may have noticed that on the channel, we've been talking a lot about Eric July, his company, The Ripiverse, and his comic books, Isom 1 and 2, and Alpha Core. And this has drawn a lot of attention to the channel, some positive, a lot of it negative. And I feel the need to make a video clarifying some things, trying to explain some things to people who I believe have either misunderstood the purpose of these critiques of Eric's work, or are purposely misrepresenting not only my views, but the views of people that I have recently connected with, such as Extra Hero, Geek Getaway, TJ Laser, Father Hostage, and the rest of the crew. And by the way, a link to Tony's channel will be down in the description box down below, as well as a link to many of the people that joined Tony on his live stream. Check these guys out, they're all pretty damn awesome. And let me start by saying this, I can't speak for everyone, but I can speak for myself and I believe that I speak for most of the people who have been joining Tony's live streams to discuss this. And that is that we don't hate Eric July and we don't want the Ripperverse comics to be terrible. Some of us have actually bought and supported what Eric is doing in the hopes that his comics would be good. But the simple fact is that they're not. And don't get this twisted, a lot of us do not support the mainstream. We don't support what DC, Marvel, Disney, and other Hollywood studios have been doing over the past few years to the franchises that we love. And it frustrates me that there seems to be this simplistic mindset of many on the internet, that if you praise the mainstream, then you must automatically hate all things indie, or vice versa, if you praise the indie market, you must hate all things that are mainstream. And this is a very childish way of thinking and framing the debate. It creates this dichotomy that doesn't exist, all right? It, it, it creates this dichotomy that, you know, you have to be on one side or the other, and it's like, no, I am on the side of good entertainment. I am on the side of well-written stories. I am on the side of characters that make sense. That's what I'm on the side of. So I reject this whole false dichotomy that is being created by certain people. And I have put out a crap ton of videos talking about my issues with mainstream entertainment. And I have also pointed out how the mainstream does need competition as a part of the solution to reform and correct the terrible direction that these franchises and stories have been going down in recent times. Independent content can be and should be part of the solution, but it cannot be if the quality and the appeal of independent creations are not good enough to not only draw in an audience, but also to maintain an audience. And the Ripiverse is a perfect example of this. Look, I wanna make this absolutely clear. I give all the credit in the world for the success that Eric July has had in making a lot of money off of his comics. I also applaud him on creating an original black character in Isom, in Avery, and coming up with something new rather than take the lazy road of simply race swapping or gender swapping an already established character like we see in the mainstream. But at the end of the day, these accomplishments in and of themselves do not make for a good story. I saw one and two have major issues in regards to writing and also in regards to art, issues which continue in Alpha Core. And while Eric continues to make money, the sales drop with each new campaign. This is a clear downward trend that in the long term is not sustainable when you consider how much spending Eric is doing on his business, his employees, and also the legal fees with the charity fiasco and the battle with the International School of Ministry. Issues which Eric could have avoided or diminished if not for his egotistical, always looking for a fight mentality. Even people who initially were in support of Eric, of ISOM, and what he was doing with the Ripiverse have realized that this product is not worth the money that Eric is asking for, and his defensive attacks on his critics have only turned them away from the Ripiverse even more. As such, Eric July and his Ripiverse comics are open to criticism, just as any product produced by the mainstream is also open to criticism. We must be allowed to hold independent creations, whether comics, films, video games, and so on, to the same standard that we hold mainstream entertainment. Sure, 
There is some leeway there due to the independent creators not having the same financial resources as the mainstream, but not when it comes to the quality of the writing and the story, because anyone can sit down and write a story. The quality is only limited by their imagination and creativity, and I'm sorry, but ISOM is very limited in both regards, and it is 100% legit to point these shortcomings out. Because at the end of the day, what I want is well-written stories and characters, no matter if they come from the mainstream or from the independent creators. If you can't give me that, expect me to call that out. For years and years and years, we have been pointing out the crap storytelling of the mainstream, and rightly so. And when we did, we were attacked by the mainstream with accusations of sexism, racism, and hate, all as a way for these shit writers to cover for their own lack of talent. Now that Eric has put out his comics and we rightfully point out his own shortcomings, he and his followers have replicated the tactics of the mainstream and go on the attack against their critics. Eric and his followers have become the very evil that they claim they were fighting against. That is extremely hypocritical and we are going to call out that hypocrisy. Eric has even received advice and criticism from other independent creators who have frankly been doing comic books for longer, such as Ethan Van Skyver, someone who created some of the best comic books over at DC and is now working on his own independent product known as Cyberfrog. And rather than take the advice of these fellow creators into consideration, Eric Eric went on the attack, again replicating the attitude and tactics of the mainstream. We cannot have two separate sets of standards. We can't say that something is wrong when the mainstream does it, but is okay when the independent creators do it. At that point, you have lost all sense of objective standards and logic, and you are simply supporting a product not based on quality, but rather on personality. And at that point, the product is not the Ripperverse comics, but Eric July himself. This is a clear form of celebrity worship, which we have also justifiably called out the left for engaging in, and yet now the right is engaging in its own form of cult mentality, whether it be around political figures like Ronald Reagan or Donald Trump or internet celebrities like Tim Poole and Eric July, the right is just as guilty of forming cults of personality as the left is. Both sides lose all ability to think critically and rationally and simply want their chosen idols to tell them what and how to think. It is sickening and I refuse to engage in such behavior. I am a human being and I will use my God-given reason and intelligence to form my own conclusion based on evidence, facts, standards, and truths. Whether you are mainstream or independent, I will give your product praise when it is good and I will give it shit when it is not. And I will make that determination based on my experience with said product. Just because you align with me politically or not has nothing and should not have anything to do with judging your work. I thought that is what I and a lot of critics of the mainstream agreed on, but recent months have shown that that may not be the case and what is worse is that there may be some elements of legitimate racism and sexism in this movement and let me be clear there is no place for that on this channel look i hope that eric gets his act together and i hope the ripaverse sees a turnaround in quality because as it stands it and him are heading for a crash and burn again eric did something amazing from a financial standpoint but if the quality of the writing is not there he will never be the rival to dc and marvel that he wants to be and let me be clear about something i don't want to see these companies die i grew up with companies like dc like marvel like disney and i have fun memories of the stories they brought to us i want these companies to be reformed and i want to see their direction change i also want there to be a strong independent market as well well, we know that this is possible for the two to coexist because look at the video game industry for example. Games like Minecraft and Hollow Knight started out as indie games and yet they have built a massive audience and grew to where they are well known IPs in the video game market. I want the same for indie comics. I think they can also have this type of success, but the quality must be there. Look, I want to see, I would love to see. I, saw I would love to see Cyberfrog and all these other indie creations 
go out into the mainstream open public market and to become popular and to become recognized and to see them all over the place just as much as we see Superman, Batman, etc. I would love to see that, but the quality absolutely must be there first. And at the end of the day, the creator does not get to decide whether their work is a hit or not. The audience does. You cannot artificially create success. The audience must see value in your work, and if they do, great. If they don't, do not go out and attack them with hurtful claims of racism and sexism like what we see from the mainstream, or by calling them ho-ass crackers like what we see from Eric July. Just do better next time. Look, I am writing my own story. I am writing my own book. I am putting my heart and soul into it. But at the end of the day, I don't get to decide whether it becomes popular. I don't get to decide whether people like it. I don't get to decide any of that stuff. You do. The audience does. I cannot artificially create that. When J.K. Rowling was sitting down to write Harry Potter, the first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, or if you're in America, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, I don't think she had any idea that this story about this little wizard boy was going to turn to this massive franchise and this massive success. A lot of this stuff comes down to what the audience wants and what the audience accepts. And you cannot control that. You cannot artificially create popularity. And that is something that is important for me to remember and for any creator to remember, whether they be independent or mainstream. And so I will end this video with this. I supported the spirit of what Eric claimed he was doing with the Ripaverse to give the mainstream comic book industry a challenge because competition forces quality. But at the rate the Ripaverse is going, it will not accomplish that. At this rate, the Ripaverse will burn out and it will be forgotten in a couple of years. Unless Eric turns things around, and again, I hope he does, I really do. But until he does that, sorry Eric, I will continue to give you the same treatment that I do the mainstream. I don't care if you're an independent comic creator, I don't care if our politics do overlap from time to time. I will still always put storytelling and the quality of storytelling above everything else because that's what this channel is all about and because that is what is truly and absolutely fair. So I hope that this video has clarified that my criticism and the criticism of a lot of other people that I'm connected with does not come from a place of hate for Eric or his product, but a place of intellectual honesty, as brutal as it may be, and a hope and desire that the Ripaverse does see a turnaround in quality. With that being said, all the best to Eric, and this is Jessica James with a Z, signing off.